Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. When we last left off we learned a bit of basics about rocket construction and flight. Uh, now we are going to do a tutorial on suborbital flight. Uh, learn how to escape Kerbin's atmosphere and return safely. In this tutorial, flight instructor Gene Kerman will take you through the essential flight controls and instruments required to launch a simple rocket to an almost respectable altitude and how to get back in one piece. Hello again, glad you could make it back. Today we take an exciting step, getting our first Kerbal into space. Yep, with a capital S. Hopefully you remember the controls we discussed in the basic flight tutorial. You can always play a scenario again for a reminder. If you're ready, let's get started. Your mission today is to make a short suborbital, less than orbital, flight over the water to the east. It's a nice arcing path that ensures a gentle, survivable re-entry. Straight up, then straight down is, well, not so good for survival. I've set up the pink target indicator on the nav ball as an aim point, but do note that this is not the case for normal missions. The target marker is normally used for other things and does not help with the sense. Starting with the nose pointing straight up on the launch pad or 90 degrees elevation from the eastern horizon. Tilt east to 80 degrees elevation on the nav ball by 150 meters per second. Start at 50 meters per second. Tilt east to 70 degrees on the nav ball. After burnout, coast up into space and have a look around. Prepare for reentry. Lastly, reenter and land safely. Once we reach burnout, i.e., run out of propellant, we'll have a bit more time to discuss some other things. All right, so we tilt east 70. Which way is east? There's got to be some kind of indicator. Um, I honestly don't know which way is east. I guess we could say that way. So from this way we'll need to point uh, to the right. Elev tilt east to 80 degrees elevation on the nav ball. Well let's uh, 80 degrees east, 70 degrees on the nav ball. I honestly have no idea. This is where smart stuff comes into play. Unlike the hopper in our first lesson, this new craft has liquid fuel engines. This means we can use the throttle to set the output power of the ship's engines. Throttle is controlled by the following buttons. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. That's, that's, that's much better. SAS stands for Stability Augmentation System, although Kerbal astronauts usually refer to it as Sickness Avoidance Scheme. Whatever it stands for, what it does is try to stop the ship from spinning around using the computer-controlled Auto Torque Drive Compensator technology to counteract the rotation of the ship. In its simplest mode, it will keep the ship aligned with the orientation it has when you turn SAS on, or if you pitch your roll while the SAS is on, the orientation when you release the controls. What's this? Achievement? Oh, that, that that's a little overdue. Um, SAS can be toggled by pressing B. Oh, okay. Another way to toggle it would be pressing left on the T to open the action group's radar menu and selecting SAS. If you have problems following the maneuvers, once you enable SAS and lift off, you can press LB plus Y to open the SAS mode radial menu. There you can select the target mode at your 9. I assume that means 9 o'clock. Uh, yeah, target mode, yeah. Um, alternatively, you can use the cursor, press LS to toggle, to press A on the small red button to the left of the nav ball that has a miniature target mode. Uh, hold on. 
that has a miniature target indicator. It's the lower left of all the buttons. Um, small red button on the left of the nav ball. That will cause the SAS to follow the target indicator and fly for you. Note this autopilot function will not be available until you are flying. Okay, there it is, right there. This craft has a bit too much engine, so we're going to throttle down for launch. Set your throttle to two-thirds the upper of the two middle notches on the slider. Also turn, S turn on SAS to help control things. Press B it will keep you pointed where you want to be pointed. Perfect. During this lesson some of the information is quite detailed and could take a while to read. As this is a short suborbital hop and I don't want you to miss anything important I will place a warning at the top of pages where you might want to pause the game to read. The warning will look like this. Okay. Okay, enough talk. I'll unlock the rest of the flight controls and you'll be clear to launch. At any time, you may press start to pause the game. Okay. In the pause menu, you can restart the flight or end this tutorial and return to the main menu. I've enabled the target marker on the nav ball. Give it a look and make sure you see it, then let's get ready to light this candle. Double check your throttle is set to two thirds, the upper of the two middle notches on the slider, and SAS is enabled, which it is, and they are. Um, and then hit A when you're ready to go. Remember to start turning at 50 meters a second. Start turning where? East, right? So I'll need to yaw to the right. Here we go. Mark it to 80 degrees by the time. Okay, here we go. Get ready to turn further once you reach 250. Okay. Okay, so I'm following the marker. Excellent work. We've got the rocket just where it needs to be in order to reach space. You should be able to let SAS keep the craft steady for a while as we accelerate further. Now go ahead and throttle up to full power. We're really cooking along now. As we get up to these higher speeds, you might start to see some heat effects, but we will clear the atmosphere before it gets too hot. Hold the course and we'll reach stage burnout safely. Well, that's good. Sounds like there's an alarm going off. Uh, I hope that's not something serious. Oh, okay, pause. Great work. We're, we're at burnout, by the way. You've succeeded in getting your ship on a trajectory bound for space. I've now set your target indicator to align with your velocity vector. That will minimize drag by turning the smallest side of the vehicle into the airflow. Somewhere around here you will see the nav ball speed indicator auto switch from surface to orbit accompanied by the speed number jumping. Oh, okay. Uh, go ahead and switch it back to surface mode by pressing the left stick to toggle the cursor mode and press A on it until it says surface again. You might have noticed some flickering flames near the end of our burn there, which is due to the high speed of your craft in the atmosphere. Normally our ascent would be a little slower, but I'm sure my friend Werner has helped you build a ship that can withstand this heat. And besides, this high and this slow, you'll be fine. If you want to have a look at your trajectory, you can switch to the map, press LB and RB, or you can also access it through the main radio menu to have a look at your projected path. Just remember to come back to flight mode again. Alright, there we are. We are fast hitting the zenith of our orbit. That's probably not the correct term, but the highest point. Apoapsis, I think it is, scientifically. Now that we're coasting our way to Apoapsis, yay, I got it right. That's the highest point on our current projected path. We've got a little time to chat. Once you clear the atmosphere, we'll go over what you can do in space. Is that alright if I just uh, speed this up just a little bit? Nope, I guess not. I learned how to do that while I was tinkering off screen. 
Yeah, look at me go. Look at Jebediah. He's having a good time. While we float up here beyond the atmosphere, I'll quickly tell you about a couple things you can do. With an advanced enough astronaut complex in the KSC, we can train our Kerbals to be able to spacewalk, or EVA, although we won't be doing that on this flight. Also, when we're carrying science devices, like our goo containers, we can perform experiments. Feel free to play with the goo canisters now by opening their action menu. Toggle the cursor by pressing the LS button uh, X over to peace. I'll let you know when it's time for the next phase of this suborbital flight. Observe the mystery goo. The goo seems to have clumped into a sphere. It also appears to have become brittle. Interesting. Transmit that data. Uh, let's just keep it for a little bit. Good thing we recorded that data. Okay, we're almost at apoapsis. Look at me learning these terms. Okay, as we near the edge of the atmosphere again, it's time to reorient the pod to get ready for re-entry. We're only going to re-enter with the pod and shoot and goo canisters, but we're not going to decouple yet. In real missions, it's best to keep your upper stage around until the last moment. You never know when you might need it. Anyway, it's best to re-enter bottom first, and since we ascended at about 70 degrees pitch, we'll naturally re-enter at about negative 70 degrees pitch. That means you want to aim the top of the capsule at the 70 degree pitch line, but the opposite heading. This is at a heading of 270 on the nav ball and 70 degrees pitch, and I place the target marker there to help you see where this lies. Turn SIS off, change your attitude, then turn it back on again. Okay. Oh, too far. Perfect. Now hold steady on your new attitude, let SAS do its job, and get ready to decouple the stage and start re-entry. We're already heading back down. Oh dear, uh, that wasn't what I was supposed to do. There we go. Now let's be a little careful when we're making those suborbital maneuvers. Now it's time to get rid of that booster since it's just weighing us down. Stage to discard the unneeded parts and mass. During re-entry, with your pod oriented this way, drag producing items near the top. Aerodynamic forces alone will hold it properly stabilized. Oops, I didn't get to read that. You are now re-entering Kerbin's atmosphere. Make sure to keep all hands and feet inside the pod at all times. We don't want you getting burnt or anything. Don't mind the flames. Werner is a world-famous rocket scientist, after all, and he's built the ship to withstand them. Last time, we watched the parachute icon to wait for the right time to open the chute. This time, we're going to do something a little different. Remember in the construction tutorial where you designed this vessel, you set the chute to not semi-deploy until 0.75 atmospheres of pressure? That means the chute won't perform the first of its two deployment steps until then, even if you activate it by staging now. On Kerbin, 0.75 atmosphere means about 2,000 meters altitude above sea level, and the craft should be traveling slowly enough by then that the chute will survive deployment. So let's take the bold step of arming the chute now and let the smarts in there pop it at the right al altitude. You know that you can trust me. Stage the chute now by pressing A. Awesome. So while we set your chute to not actually semi-deploy until around 2 kilometers, we do look out for you at mission control. We do need to ensure that the opening height, its second full deployment step, is correct. You can even adjust these parameters during flight, so change the cursor mode and press X on the parachute now and check their sliders. Don't touch the pressure slider, or bad things will happen, and make sure the full deploy altitude is no less than a thousand meters or you will not have enough time to slow down. Once you're satisfied, just hang on until about two kilometers and watch the parachute trigger itself according to the settings we've chosen. While we're waiting, I want you to look at the bottom of the capsule. Note that you do not have a heat shield. You don't need one because this is such a gentle flight. Actually, a heat shield would make things more dangerous on this graph because the additional mass would be pushing the limits of this model of parachute. Oh, all right. So, let me see. Parachute. Minimum pressure, don't touch that. 
Uh, make sure full deploy altitude is no less than a thousand. Okay, good. Uh oh, what have I done? Oh dear. I've 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 done screwed up. Oh wait, here we go. Okay, I think we're good. Now get that off the screen. All right, here we go. Let's hope I didn't screw everything up with that. Bottom of the capsule, huh? Eh? Oh, we're hitting the atmosphere. Look at us go. Jeb looks like he's hanging on pretty good. All right, we've made it to the atmosphere. Still quite a ways from the ground, though. Looks like five kilometers, about. Our parachute, I think, is set to deploy at two. Too far. Okay, good. We're set again. Should be any moment now that our parachute kicks in. Yes, the chute is away. Now enjoy a leisurely float down to the surface. Coming up kind of fast there, Gene. But okay, we've slowed down pretty good, so. Ugh, thank goodness. I was a little worried there when I accidentally turned off SAS. And... Ugh. Welcome back and congratulations on completing and even surviving your first real mission. You've managed to launch, control your vessel into space, orient yourself correctly, and land safely. That's quite an achievement. If you want to practice this again, choose Revert to Launch from the Pause menu, otherwise in the scenario. And be sure to check out the other tutorials. My next one is about going for orbit and is really exciting. There's always lots more to learn at the KSC. Well, Jeb, uh, glad to have you aboard again. How far are we from the... The Space Center. We went quite a ways, I think. I think it's right there on the left side of the screen yeah we're gonna need some recovery all right well there's the whole system does carbon have two moons Minmus and the moon. I guess we do have two moons. Well, that is the end of that scenario. Let's see what we can do with an orbital flight. I wonder if we're gonna build another ship for that. Oh, advanced construction. This tutorial presented by Warner Kerman, Warner Von Kerman, just covers how to design a craft that can orbit Kerman and return safely. Welcome to the third and final tutorial about construction, the Advanced Construction Tutorial. I've had to delay some important work today to fit, it, fit this in, so pay close attention as I show you how a real rocket scientist makes orbital, real rocket scientist makes orbital craft. Go on, go inside the VAB. In our last tutorial, we built a vessel that could escape the atmosphere, but it didn't have enough oof to escape for long. This time around, we'll cover more advanced rocket design concepts, like multiple stages and boosters, as well as the extra parts like RCS and solar panels. You'll want these if you spend more than a few minutes in orbit. 
When we're done, you'll have a craft capable of ascent to orbit, orbital operations, and a safe return to Kerbin, and you can test it out in the Gopher Orbit tutorial, which will teach you how to make use of it all. You'll notice that there are lots more parts available this time. That's because an orbit-capable craft is much more complex than a little puddle jumper that I showed you how to make last time. However, the main principles are the same, so I hope you remember what I taught you. If you mess up and say somehow manage to delete your whole craft, you can open the radio menu and select undo last to undo your last change. Again, you only have one pod available, so go ahead and select it. If you select the wrong part, change the cursor to mode change to cursor mode and press A on it in the main menu to pick it up and drop it back over the parts toolbox. Alright. Let's put that up here. Just like last time, select a parachute and place it. And here we go. And again, like last time, adjust the parachute parameters activating cursor mode and pressing X on the part you just placed. When the chute's minimum pressure is 0 0.75 and you're satisfied, change focus and press next. We're now going to construct an upper stage. This upper stage will finish placing the pod in orbit and once there provide RCS steering thrusters and electricity for the pod. It will also provide all maneuvering ability in orbit, or capability in orbit, including the re-entry burn. It's going to consist of a decoupler we don't want to carry at home, an RCS fuel tank, a liquid fuel tank, four RCS thrusters, four solar panels, four batteries, and an efficient upper stage engine. That's quite the shopping list, isn't it? So let me know when you're ready to proceed. All right, well, start with a decoupler. Uh-oh. Oh. Firstly, we'll add a stack decoupler below the pod to let us discard the parts we don't want to bring back with us. Grab a decoupler from the toolbox and attach it to the bottom of the pod, paying close attention as to that uh, its little red arrows point up to make sure the decoupler is oriented the right way. The arrows are pointing down, which they are and they're not. Um, that's not good. Detach from the pod. Okay. Next, we'll add an RCS tank. RCS stands for Reaction Control System, and this fuel will help us with fine maneuvers. Tanks category, and add an FL RT5 RCS fuel tank. Your craft is not going to need all the monopropellant in the tank, so to save some weight, change to cursor mode and press X on it to get to the parts options and move the slider down to only 100 units. Okay. Monopropellant is called that because while large rocket engines use two propellants, fuel and oxidizer, RCS only uses a single propellant. RCS is generally less efficient, but is good for small velocity changes in any direction, rather than just forwards like the main engines do, and can be used to rotate the craft as well as move it. We'll be adding multiple liquid fuel tanks in this stage to get the right amount for the upper stage engine, and we need an extra tank to offset the weight of the RCS. So add a tiny rocket propellant tank, it's the one named FLT-100, then add one, add a medium one below it. 
Okay, FL100, and then an FL400. Lastly, for the main parts of this upper stage, we'll add an engine. The Terrier engine produces almost no thrust at sea level air pressure, but is highly efficient in space and above 20 kilometers where the atmosphere is thin enough to not interfere with the exhaust. This makes it a good choice for an upper stage, since the engine will not be activated until the rocket has reached the conditions where this kind of engine works well. If you select the wrong engine, you can always throw it away and try again. So, add a Terrier engine to the bottom of the tank. Nicely done. That's a pretty well assembled upper stage, if I do say so myself. I'll get you to or er, it'll get you to orbit if you put enough rocket under it. While we have this reasonably simple vessel here, let's explore one of the other useful tools we have available. To make sure that your ship flies controllably, some parts need to be placed carefully around a point inside the ship called the center of mass. This COM is a spot where the mass on one side is balanced by the mass on the other side. Thrust applied through the COM will cause the ship to move without unwanted rotation, while thrust properly applied around the COM will cause the ship to rotate without moving. This makes the COM such a useful and important thing that we added a tool so the assembly building can show it to you with a marker. Let's have a look at how that indicator works. Radial menu, toggle overlays, um, and center of mass overlay. Okay, there it is. Okay, let's adjust the fuel levels in some of the tanks and see how that affects the center of mass. Excellent, each of the fuel tanks and drag the fuel down to zero. Okay, now go ahead and refill the tanks and we can proceed to add some of the accessories to our upper stage. They'll transform it from merely something that gets us into orbit into something that helps us once we're there. Now that you know where the COM is when the stage is full and when it is empty, you have the information you need to place RCS thrusters. RCS thrusters are found in the Command and Control category. Moving the spaceship without rotating it is called translation. This is a useful kind of maneuver for several, region, several reasons, including docking to another craft. In order for translation with RCS to avoid unwanted rotation, you need to balance the thrusters around the COM. So the net sum of forces in foul is balanced right on this natural pivot point. For two equal sets of thrusters, each set should be equidistant from the COM, and for a single set, what we're doing here, they should be right around the COM itself. What makes this complicated is that the COM changes during flight, as you just saw. So you need to place the thrusters at a compromise point, between the wet COM and the dry COM. Note that in career mode games, RCS thrusters don't become available until fairly late. In the meantime, the reaction wheel capability built into your command pod will probably be enough for turning in space, although reaction wheels will not allow you to translate. Let's turn on angle snap to make aligning the thruster parts easier. Do that, okay. Change symmetry, radial four. And then place a set of thruster blocks on your upper stage. Tiny rocket propellant tank is about the right place to attach these, just in case you need a hint. If you don't get the placement quite right, you can also use the offset gizmo to fine tune their position. 
Lots of things on a craft use electric charge, or EC, that's what, I, that's what us cool scientists call rocket electricity. In order to keep your batteries topped up, you'll need a way of generating power. Now some engines generate electricity while they're running, but you don't want to keep your engine running in orbit. Your orbit would get all kinds of messed up and you'll run out of propellant. Our command pod has some batteries built into it, but to be safe you can add more batteries, and you can add solar panels or other electricity gathering generating items. We're going to do both. Switch to electrical. And ensure we have angle snap turned on and are still in radial force symmetry mode. Okay. Um, part rotation skills to adjust the panel before placing them. That's the up, left, down, and right button we used earlier. Grab the OX stat solar panel. Hold it over the lower end of the fuel tanks and press the left button to rotate at 90 degrees. Then press A to place a set of them. Now go ahead and place a set of Z100 batteries between the solar panels. There we go. Excellent work. You've built a nice starter upper stage, which will do well for some orbital space exploration. Or orbital exploration one. Now we need to work on getting it up to orbit, and for that we'll need to build up our lower stage. In comparison to the upper stage, it's quite simple. Just a couple of tanks and an engine. That won't be enough alone, however, so we'll add some boosters too. Add another stack decoupler on the bottom of the terrier. Uh, we'll need this during our ascent to discard the empty parts of the vessel below, and oh, and notice how when you add the decoupler, a fairing is placed around the engine. This will get jettisoned automatically when you stage the decoupler. Now we need to add the fuel tanks for our lower stage. Add two of the medium rocket propellant tanks, or F FLT-400, to the bottom of the stack. For our lower stage, we need an engine that is a sustainer. That's an engine that burns from liftoff until we get af until well after the boosters separate. Let's get scientifical for a second. Rocket engine performance is measured by specific impulse, or ISP. And the ISP of an engine changes as the amount of atmosphere pressure around it changes. Just as the upper stage needed an engine that is good at the low air pressures of high altitudes, the lower stage will need boosters which are powerful at the higher air pressure of the low altitude of the launch pad. And to help carry the rocket through the transition from launch to upper stage, it will need a sustainer engine which usually sits between boosters and an upper stage engine from a performance perspective, having a wide range in between the two. So add the big engine you see there, the LV T45 swivel to the bottom of the tanks as our sustainer. At its default thrust level, the swivel is too powerful for the rocket we're creating, and for the ascent profile we're going to teach you in the Go for Orbit tutorial. So you'll need to lower its thrust level. This isn't as good a solution as picking a smaller, lighter engine with the thrust level we want, but, well, there are only so many options. Press X on the swivel and lower its thrust limiter to 65. Nice. You've, you now have the core of your rocket completed, but as I said before, we'll also be adding boosters to help the sustainer engine get the rocket up and running. We'll add two boosters symmetrically so that we keep our craft balanced, and to make sure we don't lug the useless dry mass of the boosters around after they burn out, we'll attach them using decouplers. This time, however, we'll use radial decouplers so the boosters can sit beside our lower stage core instead of under it. That way, the sustainer and boosters can fire at the same time. Select the radial decoupler and add it in radial 2 symmetry near the bottom of the lowest tank on the lower stage. 
radio two, uh, couplers, radio decoupler, lowest tank on lowest stage. More boosters is something you often hear around the KSC, and now it's time to add some. Add a pair of RT-10 Hammer SRBs to the decoupler so we have that extra kick early on. There we go. There we are. Unlike liquid fuel engines where you can adjust the throttle during flight, once you light an SRB it burns at constant thrust till it's out of fuel. We can however use the throttle limiter as we did on the swivel to set that constant thrust before we roll out onto the launch pad. Press X on one of the SRBs and change its thrust limiter to 50. Do note that changing a tweakable value on one part that's been placed using symmetry will have the same change applied to its symmetry counterparts. Remember when I said I teach you how to make that pod and thumper craft from construction basics survivable? Well this thrust adjusting is how that could be done, although you'd also have to put a decoupler on it. Right, now the SRBs have flat pancake tops which is simply not a good look. Oh, and bad aerodynamically. Let's fix that by adding a pair of nose cones. Nose cones can be found in the aerodynamics category. You can add a pair of them using radial to symmetry. While we're on that tab in the toolbox, let's add some fins too. Fins come in various sizes and styles, and as we learned earlier, will help stabilize your craft. Since these fins are control surfaces, they also add some extra control authority when low in the atmosphere, where the air is thick enough for them to have a helpful effect. Add the AVR8 winglets and radial 4 symmetry near the bottom of the lowest fuel tank in the lowest stage, and make sure they don't intersect the decouplers and SRBs. If they do overlap those parts, any flight will be interesting, but exceptionally short. Oh, uh, symmetry radial four. Let me grab these. Well, that doesn't seem right. All right, that should be right. Well, I hope that's good enough. Excellent. We've now got all the components on our basic orbital rocket, but let's run through a few extra things before we call it a day. Firstly, we should review the staging stack to check the order of actions and parts displayed there. It's lucky I've highlighted this for you because the SRBs are set to fire before the sustainer, and that just won't do. You don't have enough thrust to get off the bat that way. Move the swivel staging icon down into the same stage as the SRBs. Note that the automatically created staging sequence uh, would work if we did not want the long burning sustainer to ignite at the same time as the high thrust boosters, but since we do, we had to adjust it manually. So move the swivel down into the same stage as the SRBs. These are the SRBs, okay. Finally, pick up the pod and rotate it 90 degrees around the vertical axis. 
hold LBRB and press left or right. This will rotate the ship not just in the VAB but also set its orientation when we go onto the launch pad so that our desired flight heading of east, compass 90, will be a matter of steering in the pitch, up and down axis rather than yaw, right and left. By default, parts in the VAB are oriented so that they are lying north. So, pick up the pod and rotate it 90 degrees around the vertical axis. There we go. We always make every effort to ensure our brave crew survive, and hopefully you will take the same stance in our program. It doesn't always work out that way, of course, but it's the thought that counts, at least to those of us not in the rocket at the time. With that in mind, let's set up an abort action group for your craft for use in case of emergency. Note that in career mode, you'll have to upgrade the, v upgrade the VAB or SPH in order to access action groups. Use LB and RB to navigate between models and go to action groups. Be sure not being on cursor mode. All right, action groups. Action groups let you assign the functions of one or more parts to a single specific group. There are some default action groups, landing gear automatically go in the gear group, brakes on wheels go in the brake group, etc., and some custom ones. To display default action groups, press uh, left in the launch pad, or press right to display custom action groups. To set up an action group, select the desired action group with A from the menu, then activate cursor mode and press A on the part you want to activate. The actions already assigned to that group appear in the group actions column and the actions appear that can be assigned from the selected part appear in the selection column. To add and remove items, simply use A to move them left or right between columns. To clear all action group selections from a part, use reset in the selection column. We're going to set up the abort action group. It's triggered by pressing left and selecting abort by pressing LB, LT, RB, RT or by pressing in cursor mode on the big red abort button in flight it slides out from the left of the altitude panel at the top of the screen when you move the cursor over that area. First select the abort button in the action groups column. Now change to cursor mode and press A on the decoupler right below the pod Close the cursor mode with B and add its decouple action to the group. Oh no, the coupler right here. Okay. Okay. Then change to cursor mode and press A on each liquid engine in turn and assign their shutdown functions to the group. Okay. Uh, finally change to cursor mode and press A on one of the radial decouplers and assign decouple to the group. Radial decouplers. Pretty sure that means this one. And assign decouple to the group. Oh, I hope that works. Since these were placed with symmetry, applying the action to one radial decoupler will apply it to them all. Oh, no, that was wrong. Radial decouplers, these two. Yes, radial decoupler decouple. Okay. Now when you trigger the abort function in flight, the engines will shut down, or if they can't shut down, be decoupled. The capsule will separate from the rest of the ship and it should be safe to land by itself. Remember to deploy your parachute once it's safe, however. This may require staging a number of times, since the stage counter won't advance by itself when parts de decouple before they are staged. And there we are, your orbital rocket is ready to fly. It's been a long lesson, and thanks for hanging in there, in which we've covered lots of different advanced techniques for rocket construction. 
Give the new ship a name and save it. That's always a good practice. Then I recommend you try flying it in the Go for Orbit tutorial. A few moments later. Now, if I remember correctly, LB, LB, uh, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Uh. Well, it worked. Look at the capsule about to spin off like a top. And everything did decouple. Yep. Everything's decoupled. Uh, reset flight. And then we'll try it in midair. Three two one and we're off so far so good I think I think she'll launch now we need to make sure that abort works oh there go the boosters and deploy parachute uh, Jeb why isn't it working Jab. <sighs> Boing. All right, we're back with Gene Kerman. Uh, today we will tackle an absolutely essential skill for any space program: getting to orbit. Without this skill, we might as well be teaching you Kerbal Flight Simulator. I trust you've already checked the other flight tutorials, as well as the advanced construction one, to be familiar with the Kerbal One vessel we will be launching today. If not, I highly recommend you do so before going through this one. If you want to go back and try the others, then press Start and End Scenario, otherwise press A Next and we'll proceed. Well, alrighty then, let's do it. As I said before, the plan here is to get our vessel and pilot safely into orbit. As with the suborbital flight we did previously, we will follow a curved path to get to the point where we can circularize our orbit. Today's gravity turn, however, will be much shallower than the path we followed previously so that we build speed towards orbit. This is different from how the Kerbal pilots of old did it. They would head straight up and then hang a right as if the air was soup or something. We'll be turning early and smoothly, but don't turn too far or you might be mistaken for one of those low-flying turkeys. As with the previous flight, I will place a target marker on the nav ball to show you the optimal velocity vector. But do note that this indicator won't be around normally and is not usually used the way this tutorial uses it. I'll also display some technical information about your path as you go to help you learn the right way to get there. For now, set your throttle to max and prepare to launch. You should now see the marker on the nav ball, so you'll have something to follow, and this ship has been designed so that you don't need to worry about throttle control during the ascent. Hit A when you're ready to go for orbit. If you want Valentina, the Kerbal pilot, to fly the curve for you, then you can enable SAS and let the mode and set the mode to target after liftoff. Alright, good to know. Alright, I guess we're ready to go. Valentina, you got this, right? Let's do this. Five. Oh wait, real fast, let me just make sure we still have the abort function. Good. <laughs> Alright. Ready, Valentina? Five, four, three, two, one, launch. Don't worry about your throttle. You just need to pay attention to the target marker and the proper times to stage will prompt you along the way. Valentina, you are flying this thing, right? Okay, good. I think she is. Sorry about that. I'll stay in this mode. Don't use the left thumbstick. Just let Valentina fly this. She's been trained for it. I just hit buttons. Alright, prepare to separate. Stage again to ignite. Excellent. You've survived through the first phase of launch, and now we have a proper, longer, 
or a longer, more gentle burn to accelerate toward apoapsis. If you switch to map mode, we can have a look at the trajectory of the rocket. There we go. Now you can keep an eye on that trajectory while we track our future path. If you hover over the apoapsis node on the map, oh, it gives you a countdown. You can pin a marker so that it remains visible. To do that, toggle the cursor mode and press X over the marker. You need to keep burning along that path until we will clear the atmosphere by a handy margin. We'll aim for 80 kilometers. Cut the engine and press or press down once the apoapsis hits 80 kilometers. All right, we're getting close, so get ready to cut throttle. And that's going to get us there. I've made sure the engine is shut off now, and we'll coast till we clear the atmosphere at 70 kilometer altitude. You may notice your speed dropping uh, a little as we coast. That's nothing to be concerned about. It's just gravity trying to bring us down and air trying to prevent our success. We'll beat it, though. You're looking good. Meanwhile, I'll keep an altitude display open so you can track your progress ascending to your apoapsis. Now that we're clear of the atmosphere, we can warp ahead through time to get to the apoapsis more quickly. Important rocket scientists like us do not have time to waste. Press A when you're ready and we'll warp till it's time to make our next burn. Alright, we're almost there. Now all we need to do is accelerate some more so that we fall past Kerbin. That's basically what an orbit is, falling and missing. Gravity will be pulling us towards the center of Kerbin, but, we but we'll be traveling so fast that we constantly miss. Rotate your craft to align it with the prograde marker. We'll learn more about that later. Um, or use SAS's maneuver mode. When it's time to throttle up, I'll tell you. Let me try. Here we go. It's time to throttle up. He'll tell me. Okay, we are approaching our apoapsis very quickly. Throttle up. Congratulations! Now officially in orbit. That is quite the achievement. Hopefully you can see the difference between the suborbital hop and this reaching orbit ascent, and just how far and early we turned. Also notice how we designed our rocket to accelerate reasonably through the ascent and didn't go straight to ludicrous speed. Overpowering the ship is a common rookie mistake. Well, everyone, uh... Valentina has a lot on her mind right now. I'm sure someone will be up there to get her. But we, unfortunately, have exceeded our usefulness. So that will be the end of this video, everyone. I'm making... Well, I was about to say good progress, but uh, I'm getting there. Let's just leave it at that. Uh, until next time, everyone, I've been Curtis Watson. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more if you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.